as a photographer, we have to use certain tools to do photography. Every craftsperson, every artist has her or his tools. A sculptor has a chisel, a painter has a brush, a carpenter may have a hammer. Without the tools, we cannot create what we need to or want to create. When we are making photographs or when we are taking photographs, we also need certain tools that help us or assist us to do the photography and to finally, eventually become a photojournalist. So what are these tools of photography that we need to know, we need to master and we need to be good at so we can get photographs that not only tell a story but technically they have what we call the correct exposure. Three parameters that influence the lens system and the quality of the image are the aperture, the shutter speed and the sensitivity. They influence the amount of light that enters into the lens system and decide the exposure. We need to learn about these so then we can take the photographs with the correct exposure. Now, we are going to learn more about these with the help of Mr. Desikan Krishnan. Welcome back students. Today we are getting into a very, very critical part of photography or photojournalism, which is the tools of, again, photography or photojournalism. It is not only very, very interesting, but also very critical. You have to follow this very closely. Let us start uh, right from the beginning. What is the most important thing for taking a photograph? Of course, you would say it is the camera, the lens or the subject. But there is another aspect to it, which is light. The, without light, there can't be any photography. It can be any source of light. It can be daylight, it can be a torchlight, it can be a tungsten light, it can be moonlight or any other source of light. But without light, there can't be any photography. That's why the term photography means writing with light. What does the term photography refer to I mean? It means writing with light. It was coined in 1839 by one John Herschel when he was working with glass negatives. You have a photograph of John Herschel uh, over there on your screen. John Herschel discovered the term or coined the term writing with light when he was working with glass negatives, which forms a very, very interesting part of photo history. Now, let us look at some basic photographic terms which you will have to understand to take photographs, not only good photograph, but also to take any type of photograph. You have got to understand these terms and learn how to use them. The basic photographic terms which I am talking about are exposure, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, lenses, focal length, depth of field. Up to depth of field is common for both the digital camera and the earlier analog cameras. Right, right. In fact, right from the pinhole cameras till the current days, up to the depth of field has been the same. It has not changed. Then we get into the digital camera, which means the white balance, sensor, resolution. So, these are sort of the basic photographic terms which you will have to understand. And now, we will go on and explain each and every one of them to you. Now, how do you take a photograph? Any answers for that? Think you people have been uh, shooting pictures. Some of you have been shooting pictures, but think how have you how have you taken the photograph? What did you do to take the photograph? The common answer which I get is we click. Yes, you do click. I understand you're right. You're not wrong over there. You're absolutely right. You what you do is click. Click is nothing but pressing the shutter release button. 
what happens when you do that click? You make what is known as an exposure. Exposure is the amount of light that falls on the sensor. Now you have a diagram where you see the source of light entering the lens and then entering the sensor. This is how what happens, light converges on the lens and then it falls on to the sensor. So light which is reflected off from a subject, again you do not shoot light directly, what you shoot is light which is reflected off from a subject. So there is a subject over there, light is reflected off from a subject, it enters the lens and from the lens it goes on to the sensor. So the amount of light that falls on the sensor is your exposure. The earlier days it was a film, nowadays it is a sensor. You expose the sensor to light. Now you cannot take the sensor out, expose it to light and say I made a photograph. There is a dark box which is the camera and there are certain controls in the camera which will help you to make this exposure. The controls were there in the terms which we discussed earlier. So the controls in the camera which will help you to make this exposure are 1, shutter speed, 2, aperture and 3, the ISO. These three form what is known as the exposure triangle where you have the ISO on top, the shutter speed and the aperture in the bottom forming a triangle. This is what is commonly referred to in most photographic uh, internet this thing or books as the exposure triangle. Now when we are talking about exposures, there are three different types of exposures. I repeat, there are three different types of exposures. The first one is the overexposure when the sensor receives more than the amount of light that is required. Then your photographs are going to be bleached. There is a photograph which is overexposed. When you see it is pale, it is bleached, it cannot be used. The sign or a symbol for an overexposure is a positive sign. In most camera exposure meters, in all camera exposure meters, when you see a plus sign, it is an it is overexposure. Do not worry about meters and other things. Now we would be dealing with it separately later. So overexposure is not required, is not desirable. Then you have what is known as the underexposure, which is just the reverse of the overexposure when the camera receives lesser than the amount of light that is required and your photographs are going to be dark. Here is an example of an underexposed photograph. The same photograph which you saw earlier, which was overexposed, now it become underexposed because you have allowed lesser than the amount of light which is required because the exposure given was not enough for, to, uh, to capture this uh, uh, the light falling off the doll. Right. Then let us have a look at how it would look when it is correctly exposed. Here you have the correct exposure. The correct exposure is when the subject receives exactly the amount of light which is required. The sign or symbol for a correct exposure could either be a 0, a dot, an O or a tall line. So, here the correct exposure when the subject receives exactly the correct amount of light and your subjects are going to be all right, the colors are going to be all right, the contrast is going to be all right. Here you have the same subject, the doll which is correctly exposed. You can see every part of the doll very clearly, the, uh, the, uh, the yellow is standing out, the blue is also very bright. Look at the pink of this, uh, this thing, the face, everything has been exposed perfectly. This is the correctly exposed photograph of the doll. So you have seen all the three different types of exposures. You have seen the underexposure, the overexposure and the correct exposure. By now I think you would have understood that exposing or exposing a photograph correctly or giving the right exposure is very, very important to capture a photograph or to illustrate anything else you need. You have got to get the right exposure under whatever circumstances you are shooting.